Hi, YouTube. This is Patrick, and this is my review of Game of Thrones Season 2, Episode 6, The Old Gods and the New. Uh, I loved it. I thought it was much better than last week. And like last week, this episode, the opening of this week's episode, kind of dictated, at least for me, the whole thing, pretty much. Much like last week's episode, I thought the opening was so rushed, and I just didn't like it, that it kind of... It just made me kind of numb to basically the rest of the episode until about three quarters through. This week, I mean, I looked down when uh, when Roderick lost his head and the scene was about to cut away. I looked, It felt like the episode was already, like, over to me because um, it was so good and so dramatic and just so awesome and so awful. Um, and it was, you know, it was 9-12 um, or, like, 9-13, and it was just, like, stunning that they can open on something like that. Um, so yeah, I mean, everything, with that opening scene, everything with, um, with Bran and with Theon, Alfie Allen and Isaac Hempstead Wright, uh, just the MVPs of the episode. Their two best performances of the series, pretty much. Um, it was, uh, yeah, it was just, like, really riveting stuff. Um from the look of it, from the music and everything, the way that it was just, like, lightly raining, everything just looked just so much worse. Uh, the Greyjoy theme, just, like, you know, kind of, like, pounding on the soundtrack. Um, just, uh, you know, I, uh, Bran just, like, pleading and screaming for, you know, him to stop, and you see that Theon wants to. He doesn't want to do this, but, um, and that basically being the theme of the week was kind of like being thrust into this rude awakening scenario where everyone is just like wow everything just sucks and I have to deal with it right now right away um, or just come to terms with the fact that you know this world is horrible and uh, I have to get through it in a way I didn't expect I had to um, you know Bran thought he would you know be ruling of Winterfell till Rob came back you know now look at what happens Theon thought it would be a fun little, you know, overtaking of Winterfell, and, you know, five minutes in, he gets there, and he thinks everything's going well, and then he has to execute the guy that trained him as a child, you know, at sword fighting. He clearly doesn't want to do it, but he's caught between... Well, he basically, he doesn't know what to do at all, so he's basically just listening to everyone, and then just kind of really not making any decision. Um, I mean, it makes the decision to, to, to cut Roderick's head off, but, you know, he was just going back and forth so much that it was kind of like almost... It was just, uh... It's like, I have to settle on this one, but he just... He wouldn't have been happy about it either way. There was no way. Um... And I just like that you could almost feel a little bit bad for him while completely hating him while he was doing it. At least I could. Um... Yeah, it was just, uh... It was great. I also like that it picked up right after, like, the cliffhanger from last week. Like, we didn't have to wait a week for, you know, any of that stuff. Bran's dream or, you know, Theon saying he was going to... Or looking like he was going to take Winterfell. It happened right away. We got right into it. Um, and to be honest, the, the be that was the best thing about the episode and also the worst thing because the rest of the episode, while really, really good, didn't match the opening, you know, 15 minutes. Usually you probably don't want to do that. Usually you want your last 15 minutes to be the best. Um, wasn't the case this week. It was definitely the opening. Uh, there was great stuff the rest of the episode, but the opening was just so far and away. It might have been, I think it was the best, like, at least scene or whatever scenes of this season, definitely. Uh, I think it belongs up there with, um, you know, Ned's, ex Ned's, uh, Ned's, right. Ned's execution and, you know, maybe like the Golden Crown stuff. It was, I thought it was really just that well done. And usually you don't see a beheading go that wrong on TV. So it was, you know, these writers are pretty messed up. That they had to think about, how about we don't just have him cut his head off? How about, you know, he has to kick it off. Yeah. It's brutal stuff. The rest of the stuff with them, um, see, it even it moved kind of fast. I got to see Tonks naked. That's about, that's about it. I mean, you know, yeah, they escaped. We got to see the two dire wolves and stuff. But, um, you know... It was kind of weird because that opening was so riveting, and then like Theon just like turns into like a just like an idiot the rest of the episode. Um, maybe almost a little too lighthearted. I guess they spent enough time away from it in the episode when they finally got back to Winterfell and Theon. It was enough time away that it could be a little more lighthearted. But uh, yeah, still, I don't know what my point was.
Anyway, forget it. Um, let's see, moving on to, uh, what else? Uh, all right, I'll go to Rob and Cat, and it's basically the same thing here. First, Rob gets, um, cock-blocked by his mother, uh, which was, which was very funny. And Una Chaplin looked even better, uh, with, I thought, without all the dirt on her. Um, and much kinder, too. At least, the way she, she seemed to play it. She was less pissed off at Rob this time, uh, which didn't take too long. Uh, the, um, yeah, again, the Rude Awakening stuff was getting the letter about Theon, and just, you know, just sucks. And now he has to, not only is he dealing with this war, but now he's got to deal with this, too. And yeah, Roos Bolton's going to send his bastard, but, you know, if Rob's not doing it himself, you know, you know you can't feel good about it. Uh, and Catelyn's obviously, you know, pissed off that someone else, someone that, you know, obviously they don't trust again is going to go deal with the person they didn't trust sending the first time. So it's just, you know, terrible situation. Um... Yeah, it just makes everything so much worse and so much more to deal with for him. Um, and speaking of more to deal with, uh, um, oh, also wait, the one thing I didn't like Catelyn, like you know, telling Rob, like I told you not to, you know, do anything with the Greyjoys, because I mean, like, yeah, that was you know so helpful. Thank you, you know, that helped so much. That that annoyed me. Um, anyway, King's Landing, the. Uh, I liked Sansa and Joffrey's little back and forth that Sansa was able to get a little, you know, uh, a little joke in on him that she had seen him cry before, and he, he just quickly kind of turned it on her, but he didn't do it viciously, it was more comedic. Um, so it was almost like a tie for the first time between the two of them, I thought. Like, it looked like Joffrey won, but the fact that Sansa didn't get, you know, backhanded or stripped, that's a victory, the way it's going for her. Especially the way it went for her this episode. Um... Joffrey getting hit with shit, um, getting punched by Tyrion. The whole riot was just absolutely ridiculous and just completely awesome. Um, they like zombify. They you know they look like they ate the uh, the High Septon. Just yanked his arm off. Arm off. That is that was just completely over the top and ridiculous, and I loved it. Um, not as much as I love the Hound going. Uh, oh, first you know obviously being pissed off with Joffrey. And the hound's just, like, standing there yelling. Some guy hit him in the chest with a, a rock. Like, that would do anything. He just quickly stabbed the guy. Um, so the whole riot was... Up until the whole... Up until the part with Sansa, the whole riot was, you know, I thought extremely... Just so ridiculously, like, funny. That was just me. I'm just weird, I guess. Uh, the Sansa bit wasn't funny. That was... I was kind of sitting there. I was like, don't do this, HBO. Don't do this, writers. Come on. Um... But then he saved her, and he ripped the guy's guts out, which I certainly wasn't expecting. More over-the-top stuff that I loved. Um, all three guys deserved it, anyway. But, um... Yeah, yeah. Hounds are... Hounds are I'm glad to see that the Hound got more to do than to just kind of, like, stand still and look annoyed. Um... Yeah. It was just, that was just really, really... Really nice scene. Really good stuff. Um... And then Sansa's scene with uh, Shay. It was kind of weird that, you know, Sansa hasn't opened up to anyone, but she finally chose to speak to Shay about it. Uh, I saw another review that it was probably because Shay's a woman, and after Sansa just got raped, that or near raped, that um, that's why she started speaking up. Um, but um, it, it, it felt kind of out of place that she shouldn't even now still be, you know, talking to anyone. Um... And Shay just, like, shut her down pretty quickly. But, uh... Yeah, still, that's gotta be difficult stuff to film. Sophie Turner, I'm, th I'm pretty sure she was, like, 15, or, you know, even, like, 16, and she's gotta do, like, a near-rape scene. That's some awful stuff. So, uh... You know, her, all the Star Kids, I'll get to Ari in a minute, but all the Star Kids, they're, uh... The actors, they're just really fantastic. Uh, you know, they have to be the heart of this show, pretty much. And they are, and they're doing it you know, week in and week out, just, you know, I think perfectly. Alright, moving on, yeah, Harren Hall, um, Arya and Tywin, it's just a great dynamic, um, you could just watch the two of them for, like, the whole episode. The Rude Awakening thing here, oh, I forgot about the Rude Awakening part, uh, King's Landing, Rude Awakening was obviously the riot in this shitty situation. Um, 
that they didn't that Joffrey didn't think he'd have to deal with or anyone you know anyone did uh, that things were that bad. But anyway, back to Harrenhal. The rude awakening there was just basically, you know, Arya's in the situation where she's a little comfortable all of a sudden standing there in front of Tywin. She's got this guy that, you know, can kill two more people for her. Then Littlefinger shows up, and... Uh, great scene, by the way. And he obviously knew who she was. Um, and he didn't say anything because, you know, he's Littlefinger, and he's gonna figure out what can I do with this by keeping it, you know, you know, I have this information that I can use on somebody. Um... Which I thought was great. The whole scene was just so well, you know, so well paced. Um, and, uh, yeah. The director, David Nutter. That's who it was. I said that was, that's who was doing the last two episodes. It wasn't. It was the other, some other guy. I still can't remember his damn name. But that guy was, I thought, the weakest of the of what we've had so far. And this guy, Nutter. Nutter was awesome. Um, the pacing of the, the little finger scene, it was just, that's that's all him. That's just great stuff. Um, and then later on, the stuff with Tywin, you know, just finding out, humanizing him a little bit, finding out some, like, history about his, like, his past and everything like that. It was just great stuff to watch. And him asking Arya, you know, what killed your father, and her saying loyalty, it was just the way she kind of just, just, I don't know, the way she said it, the way she paused, and the way just, you know, the way she just, like, spoke the word, it was just, just great stuff. Um, yeah, and absolutely hilarious, the second death, which also, by the way, was great that it covers the bases on the other idea that, you know, the first time she just mentions a name, you know, she probably doesn't think this guy really can do this, then he does. So you figure she's going to choose more wisely from now on, except this one, it had to happen fast, so it kind of gets the second death out of the way, so that we're not sitting there complaining about, why didn't she say Joffrey, why didn't she say this, or whatever. Um, now she's just down to one, and she really has to choose wisely. So, uh, and also, it was absolutely hilarious. Um, yeah. It's funny, Harren Hall was the lightest portion of the episode, which you would not have thought of when they first brought us there a couple of weeks ago. Um, so yeah. The wall, you know, John thinks he's with Halfhand, thinks he knows what he's getting into, and then he meets this girl. And Egret. And, um, he's just like, oh, this is the situation. Um, and then he can execute her, which although was a nice parallel with him and Theon just doing a piss-poor job of executing people in this episode. Um, but, uh, he doesn't execute her, and then he thinks, you know, oh, she's gonna be some sort of grateful about it, and she's just completely not. Um, and she's just, com you know, she runs away, and then when he catches her, she's still just completely screwing with him. No, he's, she knows he's celibate, that's why she's grinding on him. Um, just trolling the shit out of him, and uh, it ended up being pretty funny. Also, also, Iceland is just glorious looking. Everything, it's just every shot, you know. It was just, just amazing, and it probably cost them nothing. Every shot, everything was in camera, so there was no CGI or anything. So it's just like a complete win-win. Um, yeah, half hand leaving John alone to do that was probably pretty dumb. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was stupid. I'm gonna look past it because everything else I enjoyed. But yeah, yeah, that was dumb. Um, what else? I think North of the Wall is all. That's all I'm gonna get into. Um, yeah, all right. I guess ending with Korth. Karth. Um, Karth was my favorite part of last week's episode. It was my least favorite of this week. And by the time we actually got to Karth, I think we were over a half hour in. And I was like, oh, that's right. I forgot about her. Um, and the whole scene with her and the Spice King, it was, again, it was very amusing. Grammar corrections, all that stuff is very funny. Amelia Clark is obviously, is very funny and can deliver her stuff. Um, that part, portion of it correctly. And I like that the writers in the show, I think, know that her spewing her name and talking about, like, fire and blood is getting a little old. I can tell it is, because as she's sitting there screaming at these guys, they're just, like, walking away from her, just like, yeah, whatever. Um, that stuff that she thought would just work for us. I thought she could just stand there and, you know, like, boast and have dragons. It's like, you know, standing there and talking does not work in this world. And your dragons are baby dragons. So that really doesn't help you. You know, she's gonna... She is basically almost as naive as her brother now that she has power. That, you know, just like he thought he had power. She thinks people are just gonna bow down to her. And it's not gonna happen. She has to do things the difficult way. 
Um, which is, again, another rude awakening. Like, this is not how it's going to happen for you. You're going to have to go through shit to get what you want. You thought you went through shit before and you thought you came out the other side. No. Not... Not it. Um... I guess that's it for the... Oh, yeah. Dragons got stolen. It sucks. Eerie, her handmaiden, is dead. I thought she was, like, knocked out. I didn't see any blood. I was like, what the hell? Apparently they filmed a scene of her death, of her getting strangled. That's how she died. That's why there's no blood. But still, I'm pissed off at that. You know. I thought she, I thought she just got knocked out and the dragons got taken. I guess that would be stupid. They would kill everyone except her, but... Yeah. So that sucks. Otherwise, great episode. Um, I'm going to switch over to the spoiler book reading section now, which I'm going to have a lot to say on as things already 15 minutes. Shit. All right. Um, let me just switch to it. Okay, this is for anyone that hasn't, um, uh, anyone that has read the books, this is all going to be comparison to it. This, um, episode deviated from the books more than any other episode has before, and I loved this episode, so obviously I loved all the changes, and I am thrilled to see all the people just get annoyed about it for just incredibly stupid reasons. You know, just saying that, you know, why would you change this? Why would you do this? Why are they doing this? Because it's an adaptation. That's why. It's called adaptation. What works on the page does not work on the screen all the time, let alone the television screen. You know, let alone when you have only 10 hours to tell a particular story. So, going through it, I'm going to basically go through it and defend each, like, change pretty much here, because I thought they were all great. Um... Yeah, alright, so Winterfell, uh, Theon doesn't execute, um, Roderick, but I barely remember how Roderick died in the book. I know it was toward the end of it, um, but there was no emotional, you know, weight to it or anything like that, not at least when I read it. Um, this was just, you know, heartbreaking stuff. This was awful, and they sent off, you know, a minor character in just, like, a... a amazing way, which they've done that a couple of times this year, just like they did with Yorin. Um, you know, so I absolutely loved it, and again, the biggest complaint people have, also they were talking about, like, Osha, so Osha slept with him. Um, not surprising that they went there with that. She was, I mean, it was the same thing in the book, she betrays Bran and Rickon, and then, you know, it's really like a ruse. So, that's actually accurate, they just changed, I think they, I don't think she, she slept with him in the book, I don't think so, but, like, you know, it built off what they did last season with her and him, that's why it's in there. Um, yeah, the, the biggest change that's going on right here that people are more furious about it, that the reeds aren't in it, you know, people are really upset now because, you know, they seem to be leaving Winterfell, where are the reeds, what's, you know, they completely miss them. It's like, if they introduced the reeds, you know how bloated this show would be? Just think about that. Think about how they introduce these characters and all their green. Like, what are these people? It would be a mess. Just focus on the people we care about right now, I think. You know, which is Bran and Rickon and, you know, Hoder. And the, and the, the direwolves. Um, yeah, so I don't, I don't get... I mean, look, they can still introduce the reeds next season. They can still do that. And they very well might. Um, I'm sure they spoke with Jordan and say, "Listen, we're gonna cut the reeds out completely," and he'll be and he'll say, "Like, no, don't do that." So, because they're important. As for anyone who's read *Dance with Dragons*, they might be freezing to death up there by the wall. If that's all that ends up with the reeds, then you know, do we really need them? Probably not. If they amount to something, then yeah, I'm positive we're gonna get them next year, but next season. But whatever. So that's that one. *King's Landing*. The um. The riot was pretty actually exact to everything. Um, I like Cersei's little dig at Tyrion that I'm going to take someone, you know, pretty much. Anyway, it's, it's just you know that she's going to get him back. Um, and uh, so that was a nice little setup thing. Uh, but the riot was, you know, as good as I expected. As I said, uh, it was even more hilarious in the book. In the book, it really isn't that funny. Although I would like to see uh, Tyrion, instead of just punching Joffrey, I would like usually I think in the book he hits him and then he kicks him while he's down, and um, 
he tells the guys to go out there and get Sansa, and they don't right away, and then Cersei tells him to do it, and Cersei has a great line, like, you know, you should go naked to just see if you're men still. I missed that. I thought that it would be nice to see that in there. Uh, to see, like, the two char characters, like Tyrion and Cersei, are at each other's throats, basically, but they, you know, come together to do that. I thought that would have been smart, anyway. Uh, so I missed that one. But, um... And then going to see what happened to Sansa. Oh, in the books, we just see, because it's Tyrion's point of view, we just see the Hound come back with Sansa. We never saw really what happened to her. Uh, so as far as that being a change, it's not really a change. It's kind of like a deleted scene, pretty much. Um, you know. So again, no problem with it. And it was awesome. And it gave you the, the, the Sansan people, you know, something. He called her Little Bird. He said, put the Little Bird back in her cage. So he said it twice. Um... Yeah, so, I don't, I don't know what the problem is. Again, I loved it. Thought it was great. Um, oh, I skipped over Robin Catlin. Yeah, Robin Catlin, the whole thing with... Um, I'll admit the whole thing with Talisa is a little weird because as I'm watching it, I'm trying to figure out wh where they're going with it, which is kind of taking me away from kind of the, the, the drama of everything because I'm thinking, like, is she going to be this? What are they going to do? What, uh, that, I'm actually... That's more my fault, really, that I'm overthinking everything that's going on. Um, because they've changed some stuff. Uh, but it's all still, again, it's all going to lead to the same damn place, and the same thing. So if it all leads to the same thing, and it just happens slightly different, you know, what's the point? What's the, wait, wait, excuse me, what's the problem? It's all going to go to the Red Wedding. Hell, they even set it up with, in the, the camera shot where Rob is talking to Catelyn, and Catelyn's like, you know, you owe it, you know, you owe... You're, uh, you're pledged to someone else, and Roose Bolton walks right in at that right time. That's not foreshadowing at all, because he doesn't have anything to do with that shit. Um, it's just all going to lead to the same thing. I, I already said before, if Catelyn re releases Jamie before finding out that Bran and Rickon are dead, um, that'll bother me, because I think that actually hurts her character. That, that, bo that will bother me, personally. But they haven't done that yet, so I can't complain about it yet. Which is what people are doing. They're jumping to conclusions and complaining about all this shit. Uh, Harrenhal. Arya and Tywin. Yes, they're humanizing Tywin. Yes, they are. So what? So we get to see that he's not a monster. He's a smart, calculating guy. That happens to be, you know, a la that's obviously he's crude, but he's, you know, he likes Arya, and he would like Arya. Um, and, you know, so, again, humanizing a villain is not a bad thing. He's still a bad guy. He's still going to make Tyrion do all the shit. You know, he's still going to give Tyrion a whole bunch of shit. Um, you know, he's still going to go out the same way, I'm sure. It's the whole thing with Shay again, all of that stuff. All that's going to be in there, just, you know, so they humanize him a little bit right now. Oh, God. Um, yes, Littlefinger is jumping around maybe a little bit too much. Um, he basically traveled by uh, episode train, uh, which, or I guess it's like more like episode teleport that he just goes uh, wherever. Uh, but they got to set up all of it. I guess he, I, does he think he comes back? I was told, yeah, he comes back with Tywin at King's Landing at, at Blackwater, so I guess he's going to stick around with Tywin. Um, so actually, it makes sense that he's there. Um, and again, the second death, they changed it. Um, but again, it works better. In the book, She can you can sit here and hear her rationalize while these two torturers have to die. You know, And when you read about it, you're like, yes, this makes sense. Or it makes more sense. Like in the book, you're telling her, as I was, like, just kill Joffrey, just kill this, you know. But then you hear it in your head, in her head, rather. And you said, okay, you know, you can see why she's killing these people. The show that wouldn't work. So they changed it. And they made it like, oh, we need to kill somebody quickly, which I just made the point before. It gets that out of the way, so that's no longer a complaint. Um... Uh, okay, the wall... Again, people were complaining that they moved up Ygritte, um, who I love. Rose Leslie was just is amazing right away. Um, they had, she had uh, great chemistry with John. Um, 
which was nice. She looked perfect. Because when he took her hood off, I'm like, yeah, she's not, you know, gorgeous. I was like, she's not, but, like, her teeth were all the right. She, like, looks beautiful in, like, certain lighting and, like, I guess a little, you know, a little more normal in other light and, like, plain, I guess. So it was just per great casting. Um, but, uh, where was I going? Oh, people were complaining that John's away from Half Hand now. Like, you know, they're going to ruin that whole storyline because John has to fight half -hand. He's still going to fight him. He's just going to take a little longer to get back to him. It's still going to happen. You read the synopsis for episode 10, it says John finally proves himself to half -hand. What do you think that's going to be? So, it's still going to happen, so they're going to take a longer or a different road to get there. You know, it's not like John's story in, in book 2 is, you know, like he's north of the... It's not like it's the most riveting stuff. They're... they're they're making it, uh, they're putting it at a faster pace. One, because they have to, and two, because it, it's better for this medium. And, uh, yeah. Um, you know, so he'll get back to him, you know, but it lets him stay, you know, spend some time with the grad. Everyone that doesn't even watch the show can tell they're already gonna, like, hook up. Um, so that's the point here, to build chemistry between them, and then you know. Yeah. Uh, my points are running, like, I'll have, like, a point, and then it just, like, flies away. I noticed this whole, like, review. Sorry. Um, finally, at Karth, um, they're making, they're expanding everything there. And, uh, again, they have to. I don't know why people think, like, Martin's books are just, like, you know, they're weight in gold, pretty much. Um, like, Danny's story in book two, she doesn't do anything. Like, when I got to the House of the Undying chapter, I was, like, so stunned how great it was, because everything else with her was just kind of just meh. So, yeah, so they're, you know, they need to make her story a little more dramatic and a little different. Um, no, I'm not happy with Eerie dying, just because, you know, but again, it's not like it's a major, major character. Uh, so we're not gonna get the scene where she, you know, she fingers her later on in the show. Um, you know, what are you gonna do? You find somebody else. Uh, didn't hear that. The um, the whole thing with the dragons, it's obvious what they're doing. Like we were going nuts. Like why would they do that? Why would they change this? It's like because they're taking the dragons to the house of the undying, which is the reason why she's gonna go there. In the book, she just kind of there's no drama to. She just kind of goes. Korth, she's Korth, she's just kind of let in. They just kind of let her in. There's no drama there. And then she just goes to the House of the Undying, which is a great chapter. Now she has reason to go, because her dragons are there. And by the way, the House of the Undying is going to be saved for the uh, finale, so Whitebeard probably isn't happening. Um, I guess that building, I think, went to House of the Undying. So maybe they will do the whole, you know, always have to go up the steps and always have to go to the door on the right thing. But... Again, I just I, I think these changes are, are perfect for what this is a, a show a television show an adaptation of this book. You know, just all this stuff like it's not like they killed off Half Hand already. If they did that, then I'd be pissed off. You know, it's not like they're skipping Karth completely or skipping the House of the Undying. They're just gonna get to it differently. Um. So yeah, this video is way too long. And, um, this felt like more of a rant this whole second half, which I didn't mean it to be. I'm not, you know, if anyone is really upset about changes, that's, you know, it's your opinion, and that's fine. I just disagree with it. Um, but debate with me on here if you want. Uh, I'd love to debate it. Um, anyway, that's, uh, that's all I got for this week. I promise I'll have a haircut next week. Yeah. If anyone cares about that. Anyway, all right. Later. Great episode. Later.